Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, and we are here in the studio today with Deb Solt and Carrie Huddleston from Vegas PBS. For those of you that are new to the show, we broadcast live here in the studio each week, and today is a special episode being broadcast on Wednesday. Uh, and we bring guests into the studio that are involved in the healthcare industry, those that are doing great innovations, bringing new technologies into the market, medical travelers into the market, and in this case, focusing on workforce development. So, Deb and Carrie, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming in. So we're going to spend a little bit of time today talking about workforce development. And I'm curious, Vegas PBS, workforce development aren't two things that you would typically connect together. So how did that come about? And you both have very deep workforce backgrounds. So I want to hear, how did Vegas PBS get into workforce? And then I also want to learn about your background. So if one of you wants to kick off, that'd be great. Okay, well, I, I think I'll start. Um, workforce uh, and uh Training has actually been the, one of the core fundamental values of PBS since its um, inception mm -hmm. during the Sputnik period. So here in, in Vegas, basically they've been doing, they helped start the virtual high school, which is now the Nevada Learning Academy. Uh, they ran that until several years ago. A lot of online education with teacher training. And so during the recession, um, they were moving into a new facility, had all this wonderful new technology and their um, board actually adopted a community, um, one of the values of the community was a community enrichment plan, is what, what are some of the core needs of the community and how do we use our technology to help solve those. So we uh, drafted a business stra strategic plan uh, to actually get in to use our technologies and uh, launched GOAL, which is Global Online Advanced Learning. And um, it's taken off ever since. So um, we do customized online training. We uh, lots of in pretty much everything from enrichment all the way to professional development for licensed professionals. And so the two of you are deep into workforce. Deb, you and I have known each other 18 years. Carrie, you and I have known each other a couple years. We're going to come back to you, Deb. Carrie, yeah. tell us about your workforce development background. You've been in this space for a long time. Absolutely. I'd love to. Uh, well, it starts way back, right? Uh, I'm an Air Force retiree. I was in the Air Force for 20 plus years. I retired here out in Nellis Air Force Base. Uh, I was involved most of those years in training development for professional growth uh, for enlisted um, uh, members as well as officers. Uh, and so my background was in professional development, specifically in leadership and management development in the military. And then when I, when I got out of the military, when I retired from the military, uh, of course, you really can't retire uh, because we love doing what we're doing so much. So I got recruited by the Clark County Fire Department, mm -hmm. and I was a fire training officer with the uh, training development organization there. And I was asked to uh, work with their leadership and management programs to create the first ever fire officer training program statewide. Uh, and so that's uh, what I did there largely. It's all re revolving around workforce. Um, and then, of course, when I got out of uh, that job, I decided to work with Deb over at Workforce Training and Economic Development because what they're doing there is so exciting for Southern Nevada. Uh, and so what, I'm, what I do there is I'm a sales coordinator and a program coordinator. Uh, with the Desert Meadows Area Health Education Center. And we're going to come back to that. I'm interested to find out how this AHEC group came about, <laughs> why it's involved. Uh, Deb, you've been in workforce for your entire career. Uh, give us a little bit of background on that and what brought you to, to Las Vegas. What brought you to Vegas PBS? Um, well, not my entire career. Most of Started it. out as a probation officer. Ah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, now I just, uh, you know, I'm with, with uh, adults. Um, but... Basically, I started out um, as a probation officer. I've been a CFO of companies. I've owned my own companies, uh, was in mergers and acquisitions, and unfortunately got a, a divorce and ended up in Lower Columbia, or actually Longview, Washington. And uh, that's where I started my workforce and economic development career, um, working as the um, business and industry center director. I actually mm -hmm. developed a BNI center for that college which is how I ended up in Southern Nevada. I was working with Ocean Spray um, uh -huh. at the time um, in Washington, and Ocean Spray had opened here in Southern Nevada and was looking for additional training for their workforce. And I was delivering online education from Washington down here. 
So you've been in this online training space for, for a long time. For almost 28 years. Long before it was yeah. even long, thought of. <laughs> absolutely. It was one of the first ones in America well, to build a full online degree program where you didn't even have to step foot on a that's campus. That's cool. Very cool. Um, I was recruited down here by the College of Southern Nevada um, and was a director for their business and industry. Ended up um, being the interim dean of workforce and economic development for CSN when they were uh, reorganizing and through several leadership positions, left there, um, started my own training and development company. Um, I wanted to be able to move a little more uh, swiftly with a lot more agility. Sure. And uh, which is how I ended up at Vegas PBS. And when I went in and saw the technology and it, it was like an open playbook, I, I often say that I'm really an economic development geek. Um, you know, when I came down here, there wasn't a lot of outreach to business and industry. The city had, was growing so fast that the colleges were at their capacity and no one was really talking to the business. What do you need? What's changing? How are we changing it? And so that's the fun part for me is putting those puzzle pieces together and I have the ability to do it at PBS. Yeah. So I, I'm curious. So Vegas PBS houses, incubates and provides leadership to the Desert Meadows Area Health Education Center. First, how did that come about? And then more importantly, give us a description of what an AHEC does, because it's relatively new to Southern Nevada. Okay. Um, well, it came about because um, of our online training portal that we developed. And um, so Andrea Gibbons, up, who runs the High Sierra AHEC Center, actually um, came down and she was looking at how does she diversify and her revenue stream because AHECs are funded through federal HRSA grants through our land-grant colleges, which is UNR. And so we created a, a special learning portal for the Nevada AHEC centers and not knowing that there was ever going to be another one. And so uh, we, we launched a Nevada AHEC portal to connect the community to healthcare program, the licensed professionals to professional education. Um, and then I went and spoke at a HRSA conference. And I always say I go to conferences sometimes, open mouth and insert work. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I came back from there and the head of UNSOM, which is the uh, university's um, special projects, um, Gerald Ackerman called me and said, you know, we have a proposal. We'd like you to become another AHEC center. We just, we have, there was a gap in Southern Nevada. The old uh, Southern Nevada AHEC had closed. Mm -hmm. And so we helped write the, the work plan in order to bring Vegas PBS in as another AHEC center serving Southern Nevada. Okay. And um, at, which is how I hired Carrie, and I'll let Carrie talk about some of the other things that we do at AHEC. So, Carrie, tell us a little bit about your role over there. It's, you've got a couple different hats that you wear. Uh, tell us about the role with AHEC, and then we're going to dive a, a little bit deeper into Camp Med. Uh, but in the meantime, tell us a little bit about your role at Vegas PBS. Well, first, I have to explain a little bit about what the heck is an AHEC, because that's my number one <laughs> question that I get. I actually um, uh, presented us at a symposium at the. Um, at the uh, at the actual college, uh, talking about what the heck is an AHEC, and the reason why I say that is because there's over 200 AHEC centers in the nation, uh, so we work in a collaboration uh, within this network of centers to provide three basic things, and that is to recruit and retain healthcare professionals in your state, in our state, of course, uh, is doing that through the three AHEC centers, the High Sierra, the Frontier, and Desert Meadows AHEC. And of course, we also are very involved with improving access to quality health through, wor uh, through workshops, seminars, um, or even public screenings of PBS programming that relates uh, in the healthcare industry, which many of our pro programs do that. And so my role is basically to make sure that we're connecting healthcare students to health careers, Yep. and to connecting those health professionals back to the community and providing uh, that opportunity for the community to get those, uh, those whether it's health literacy or whatever the public health information is at the time that's uh, meaningful for the community. So I am the coordinator of that, uh, and I spend a lot of my time building relationships with hospitals, clinics, basically healthcare providers in all different disciplines, as well as the colleges and universities that have those healthcare students uh, that we plug into our pipeline programs. So that brings me to the secondary schools. We, we do a lot of programming uh, with middle school and high school uh, for our pipeline programs. We have a teen education and careers in healthcare, 
uh, program one and two and three. One is for the education and the overview of jobs in healthcare, and the second one is a deeper dive into the pathware, pathways and the different careers. And then, of course, the three is that parent-student engagement. Now that we've got the students interested, excited about going into healthcare, what next? Because the parents play such a, a, a pivotal role in that. And, of course, Camp Med. I mean, that's one of our pipeline programs that we're going to talk about. Yeah, we're going to spend some time on Camp Med. I think that's one of the most fascinating programs that I've ever seen in Las Vegas. So it's a first Kudos for getting that off the ground. But here's a little book uh, that, that Healthcare Careers in Nevada. Right. Spend a little bit of time. You know, I don't know if a lot of states have this type of book. And uh, yeah, tell us a so. little bit about it. What does it, what does somebody find inside of here? Because this is just a plethora of information. For somebody looking to get into healthcare, this really gives them the pathways and a choice of what's available. And what a great guide for parents to work with their children to get them interested yeah. in healthcare. Absolutely. That's that's uh, the primary manual that we use in our Teach 2 program, where we actually sit down with the kids that are, are really interested in going into health careers, and we talk about those different pathways. Well, it's, an, it's a product that's produced on an annual basis. Semi-annual. Uh, uh, semi, or, uh, not semi, a, um, biannual. It's okay. fiscal year, yeah. right? And it's created through our partnerships with the Office of Statewide Initiative. Dr. Mm-hmm. John Packham leads a crew. John's of, a rock star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He leads a mighty crew that works with the uh, Department of Labor and just all the different governmental agencies to make sure that the information in the manual is accurate as possible. It covers 14 different healthcare career categories, and it details 70 job types within those 14 categories. And then, of course, it has hundreds of related job titles uh, in there as well. And it also has, uh, you know, the overview of the job description of each one of those 70 job types. It talks about the wage uh, and the salary. We actually uh, incorporated wage in the uh, breakdown because a lot of the students really couldn't comprehend or really didn't understand the term salary. So we broke it down into a wage. As you know, in Nevada, a wage is very uh, knowledgeable with most people in Nevada. And so it gives them a chance and an idea of what they can make in that healthcare career. And they also talk about uh, how many jobs are being currently uh, held in that, those different t- job types, as well as the projection of what how many jobs would be open in that particular uh, health career. Uh, and, and it also has a pathway, all the different schools in uh, Nevada that you can go to to achieve certification or actual degrees in those health careers. What a great resource. It's uh, The community's fortunate to have you guys out there pushing this. This is big. So I want to spend a little time on Camp Med. I'm, Before I, we do that, can yeah. I just interject a little bit about this book? Yeah, please. Too, because please. it is produced every two years. Um, so one of the things that we do is um, we actually push that out to our boards and councils in order to add jobs because, as uh, you know, technology is changing yep. The kinds of jobs that are there, new jobs are being created. And so we're trying to make sure that it is up to date with the jobs that actually exist yeah. in the economy so that we can start changing how we train in some of those jobs as well. Very important because, you know, it's I spent a lot of time in, in healthcare career development as well. And it's a lot of the kids, they want to get into healthcare, but they don't know what that means. Do I want to be a doctor? Do I want to be a nurse? Uh, what if I don't like to stand on my feet for 12 hours, but if I don't like the look of blood and what's available as a med tech, you know, there's so many yeah. different yeah. variables. And this is just, it's a beautiful roadmap for somebody to flip through here and go, I could really see myself becoming a respiratory therapist. And now all of a sudden they've got an idea of what it is, how much they're going to get paid, how many uh, jobs are out there. So thank you guys for producing. And this is big. I think also for our underemployed and our dislocated workers, it's a great yeah. resource. We get it to the workforce centers. Yep. Um, so that they can actually use that with their clients as well, because even a lot of our adults could be retrained in many of the uh, opportunities that exist today. Yeah. So now I want to jump into the yeah. f- my favorite part, Camp Med. So, Scott, if you could cue up that video, I want to play just a brief video uh, about Camp Med. What a, an amazing program. Then we're going to dive really in and talk about it. To see all of you here. And I want to thank all the parents for lending their young adults to us for the last two and a half days. What we have seen are these bright, capable individuals. I would take any one of these into our class in medical school. They're that good. Physicians start off with what they call a differential diagnosis. They think of all the possibilities. Then they go and they address the laboratories and say to the laboratories, okay, let's test out our hypotheses. And so they went through five laboratories.
Fantastic. So let's let's uh, keep that rolling. Just to, we're we're going to turn the audio down just so we get some of the visuals there. But uh, tell us a little bit about Camp Med. I'm intrigued by this program. Best it's laboratories. Uh, what uh, just a, a great program as a whole. I, I heard last year the kickoff year, huge amount of uh, engagement, huge level of success. So tell us a little bit about Camp Med, where it got started, how it came about, leadership behind it, and then we're going to talk about the one year anniversary next. I think I'll start and turn most of it over to Carrie because Carrie's really the one that ran with it. But um, we have a a, a health council um, for our AHEC center at Vegas PBS because that's one of the requirements. So one of the things that we did and all of the schools in the local area are part of that, um, you know, that we have WGU, Nevada State College, College of Southern Nevada, UNLV, Roseman, UNR, Toro. Um, and it just so it's not other... just the medical schools. This is the ho- the whole higher education system in healthcare careers. Absolutely, because yeah. an AHEC is not just going to help develop pipeline for doctors. It's all of we've we've got serious shortages in all of our health area in, yeah. in Nevada. So the goal is, <clears throat> excuse me, to really look at what can we do for for healthcare as a whole for that yeah. workforce. And so in doing our strategic plan, one of the things that they said is, how do we get the kids engaged earlier? And um, Roseman, in going through their accreditation and stuff, uh, Dr. Penn, no, it's Dr. Rosenthal, um, actually had started a similar program, which Carrie will tell you about in another state, and ran that program for many years, very successful. So if it's not broken, you take what works. Absolutely. So... They, my council said, let's do it. And every one of them were committed to actually fiscally putting together the sponsorship to get that done so that we could launch it last year. And I'm going to, and, and Carrie really took it and ran with it. So I want him to really tell the story. Yeah. I just want to really talk about uh, the, the meaning behind the program and that is medical self-efficacy. Um, our kids, uh, the very diverse group, uh, we have, uh, we had 50 kids from all over the valley, um, representing all kinds of different um, uh, populations. And the main thing that held them all together was their desire to to maybe be a physician one day. And so we were really fortunate because Dr. Mark Penn with Roseman University and Dr. Kenneth Rosenthal, who is the pa- associate professor with pathology over the, at the School of Medicine, well, excuse me, uh, during their pre-accreditation, started talking about a program they ran in Northeast Ohio in collaboration with the AHEC Center there mm-hmm. and the uh, School of Medicine there in Ohio. Uh, it was called MedCamp. And uh, Dr. Rosenthal and Dr. Uh, Mark Penn had been a part of this program since its exception uh, for 26 years. They wow. ran this successful program uh, that was noted throughout the state as being the physician camp for um, eighth graders going into ninth grade. And so we, we, we had a great opportunity to kind of introduce a program that had already had a track record of huge success in Ohio and bring in here at a time when um, Roseman was going through their pre-accreditation process and UNLV was getting ready to start their uh, pre-accreditation process. And of course, Toro University of Nevada was eager to join those two schools from the medical side of it to really bring this uh, medical self- self-efficacy program to uh, our students. And so the excitement just built and built, and the collaboration was something I'd never seen before. I'd never put together a camp of any kind. I'd been involved in workforce development for many years, but I'd never put together a a camp for students, for secondary students. And so the excitement that I saw in the faculty, we had 32 staff and faculty for 50 campers. That speaks volumes. Uh, it, these are our local doctors running. What a this. great commitment from oh, our yeah. local physician community Absolutely. to step up because we all understand pipelining our youth into healthcare careers is absolutely critical. Absolutely. And it's, you know, for those that are new to the show, you probably know that uh, uh, Las Vegas is opening up a couple new med schools. So it's UNLV uh, started accepting applications. Their students start in July. Uh, Roseman's still going through the accreditation process, and hopefully they'll be starting to to accept students here pretty soon. But uh, they're both looking to target uh, the local populations, local kids getting into school 
Uh, so we're growing our own, and that's absolutely critical. So talk to us a little bit about the nuts and bolts of the program. So these kids, they show up, and what do they do? Well, I, I think it's important to start with it's, a, it's an application process. Ah, okay. Mm. And we had over 100 applications for 50 spots. Very wow. competitive. Yes. Yeah, that's nice. Um, it's not just, I want to go to camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I want I want to be in the healthcare. So there there was an essay. They were rated on that. We had a independent group committee actually score all the different applications. Yep. Um, and so it wasn't just those who could afford it because some people were fully scholarshiped. Other people um, did not have any scholarship. Um, so it just, it wasn't, you weren't accepted on your ability to pay. It was on how you were scored. Wow. So, so. that, that's awesome. And, and you just celebrated, uh, well, let's, let's get to the nuts and bolts. Okay. I want to hear about what, what, what these what kids show up. What happens? You're talking about a camp man, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they show up very excited, right? Uh, they're in their civilian attire. Should I say, uh, here's my military coming out. Uh, <laughs> but the reason why I say that is because we, uh, we gave, we were actually able to give all of the campers free set of scrubs from the Angelica Corporation who donated those scrubs to our kids. So they come in their civilian clothes. Maybe they know each other, but probably they don't because they're from so many different schools. And so they come, they're all excited. They get the orientation. Uh, They talk about what are the characteristics that might make a good physician. Uh, They start, the faculty starts off right from the get-go, getting the kids involved, thinking about being a physician, working right on that medical self-efficacy right from the get-go. And then they uh, get introduced to, to the fictitious patient. Um, we had one of the faculty role play that they were the fictitious, fictitious patient. Uh, Dr. Rosenthal uh, started off with a question and answer session with the kids, trying to figure out right in the beginning what's going on with our patient. And so they go through the scenario, they work through it, then they break up into groups where they talk more about what's going on with the patient. So that day one is all about, you know, getting to know each other, uh, beginning to think about uh, what it might be like to be a physician and, and trying to come up with a medical diagnosis for a patient. They're given the symptoms and they immediately begin to uh, start working in teams uh, to figure out what might be going on with the patient. Kudos again to our to you guys for making this happen, but to our local physician community for stepping up. They see the importance of this. Uh, the better kids we get into the programs, the better doctors we get out, the better doctors we get out, the better care we get in the community. It's it's really a no-brainer. And you guys, you celebrated this past weekend, wow. one-year anniversary. Well, uh, so let, exciting. Yeah, let me back up before that, because yeah. one of the other things about it that, that I think is important is it's a two-and-a-half-day residency program. They are actually in the dorms at UNLV. Oh, wow. So they're as if living they're, a, they're, they're living They're living there. the dream. They are. Yeah, they are living the dream. Parents, you know, some people push their kids out the door the at the curb and said go on in other people walked and had to make sure that we were okay to leave their kids with it was very very fun to watch Um, but it is a residency program and the second thing before we get into the reunion it's because our medical community really valued it so much they have agreed to mentor these kids all the way through medical school if they go to medical school that's huge and so in order to do that we realize we have to continue to bring these kids back together regularly and engage them in something along a similar line of, of medical school and or expose them to the other schools and the programs that are there for those that actually don't have um don't end up going on to be a doctor it's we want to keep them on track yeah, in if, we can't, if they can't be a doctor let's get them somewhere into another healthcare right. career absolutely and so um we just got them back together and uh carrie held that last weekend scott so. can you queue up a couple of those photos i, I want to kind of focus in on this and carrie tell us a little bit about what are we looking at here we're going to go through some of these photos i want to hear the story about the reunion and yeah. uh just the camaraderie that was probably built and and tell us a little bit about that absolutely well what we're looking at now is uh, of course myself and four uh very excited desert meadows area health education student ambassadors all four of these individuals are fourth year medical students mm-hmm. with the university of nevada school of medicine so you know they're 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 really excited. They're part of a, a program um, where they 
uh, are in the community and trying to, uh, you know, make a difference. And this is one of those type programs that we get the pleasure of plugging these fourth year medical students in. And of course, now, uh, before I get, and this is a picture of them actually presenting along the same line of Camp Med. They're given a fictitious patient. They're brought together. We had a a kind of an icebreaker, get to know you in your reunion part in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then we introduced a fictitious patient in the auditorium. Uh, No parents are during this part, but they are invited to come back for the graduation, which that's what you see now. This is at the graduation where they've already gone through their clinical rotation. There are Uh four different uh, laboratories where they're looking at MRIs, CAT scans, um, just uh, just a plethora of information trying to diagnose. And just like in residency, the last uh, rotation they wind up at is where they have to present from that perspective uh, what their diagnosis is of the patient. So here's one of our ambassadors, along with uh, Dr. Mark Penn in the corner there. We had the uh, physician mentors that were critical in the camp med be the attendings uh, for uh, the reunion and let the actual okay. uh, medical medical students teach the laboratories. Yeah. So the medical students, uh, and if that went the other way, you'd kind of see how excited they are to be looking through that uh, that the piece of equipment there for students but, to be able to touch yeah. this equipment, feel this equipment. That's got to be big for them. Oh, it's huge! And and these are our ambassadors. How wonderful was it for these young students to actually be mentored and taught by these fourth year medical students? And mind yeah. you, these are ninth graders this year, right now. That's they're ninth uh, graders. I wish I was exposed to something like this as a as a youth. You know, too, we just right? we didn't have it. No. no. We didn't have it. Yeah. So, yeah, this is just, uh, and there's Dr. Ken Rosenthal on the left. The, I call him the father of Camp Med. Yeah, so without <laughs> his leadership, this probably would uh, not have come about. Not huh? to this degree. Not so quickly. And how, kudos to Mark, Dr. Mark Penn for oh. giving him the leeway to create this program. And it was wonderful to see the other medical schools, UNLV and Toro and UNSAM, come together to support this program. To see that level of collaboration in our community makes me proud to be a Las Vegan. Well, oh. you know, one of the things, and, and it was stated by several of the, the people when we were collaborating to put it together, um, it was stated to us that, thank you, Desert Meadows AHEC, you have given us a neutral... Um, playing ground to yeah. collaborate on behalf of the future and and where Switzerland. That's yeah, what we call it. I mean, yeah. there's no competition. We all have the same goals. Yeah. Um, they might compete when it goes to the recruiting and all of that, but right now it's really about the development mm-hmm. in order to be able to recruit. It's good competition. It it's makes great. everybody better. I'm so excited to see academic medicine coming into this market because yeah. we've been absent of academic medicine, real academic medicine. So now that we've got UNLV coming on board, Toro producing, God, they're producing 135 doctors a year right now. The expansion of graduate medical education across the valley. Healthcare as we know it in Southern Nevada is just going to change. I think it is. But but the, the beautiful part is we want to make everyone whole. And the other thing about the collaboration too, what, what we're doing is we're rotating the host site for all the reunions. So these students will be exposed to all of the schools and the programs at those schools. So each school will be able to develop their own reunion experience. And, you know, it it will be fun to see as this evolves what they put together for these kids. Absolutely. Well, we're coming to the end of the show. It's crazy how fast 30 minutes goes by. But uh, I want to thank the two of you for being on the show and I think there, we, I've got a whole slew of questions that we just did not get to <laughs> so the good part about that is we're going to invite you to come back uh, and That's let's awesome. talk about some of the other programmings that uh, AHEC has some of the other programs that Vegas PBS has and again thank you for all the good work that you're doing here in the community it's uh, important that we uh, build these pipelines of future students getting into medical school and other healthcare careers but I want to thank everybody for joining us here on another edition of Inside Medicine please tune in frequently you're going to see us out out there on iTunes, Roku, all of the various stations. You'll see this video posted up on Facebook, all of the social media channels, and I do encourage you to come back and view the next episode. Again, thank you for joining us for another edition of Inside Medicine, and many thanks to the folks from PBS. Thank Thank you. you.